Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm pleased to announce that as of today, my new handmade watercolor paints are available for purchase in my Etsy shop. This initial launch is fairly small in quantity, so if you miss out on the paints, don't worry, I will be making and listing more in the future. But for now, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the paint and what sort of went into making it. There are three colors to start off with. There is Cretaceous Coal Black, Ironstone Iron Oxide, and Badlands Brick Pink. These are the colors that I had in mind when I first thought of this project because these are the most pigmented and colorful stones that you can find in the Canadian Badlands. I will be expanding to other colors in the future, um, but I don't really know what they'll be. I'll have to do some experimenting, collecting some pigments from the wild. You'll be able to purchase these colors separately in full pans or in a set called the Strata Trio which includes all three colors. Today I will be painting with this little trio that I made for myself. I want to offer paint sets like this in the future made from found objects. This is literally a lid from a kombucha bottle, <laughs> but I wanted a small palette just for my own purposes. Uh, and I'll be listing things like this uh, in the future. I'm painting on 100% cotton paper and drawing sort of a stylized dinosaur dragon creature. Now as you can see this isn't fully dry because I made it recently. Um, all of the paints in my Etsy shop of course are the dry versions of the paints. I may at a future date be able to offer tube watercolors. Um, I have tubed my own watercolors before, but it's messier for sure. But I just wanted to show you today how these paints work and how lovely they are. I'd like to also make a note on light fastness, which you can read a little bit more about in the item descriptions on Etsy. I have not completed full extensive light fastness tests on these paints. If you purchase them and you like doing light fastness tests, by all means, please do it for me <laughs> and, uh, and get in touch with me because I'd love to see the results. But basically I do not expect that they would be fugitive because they are fairly stable colors in nature. Uh, in the Badlands they are baking in the sun all summer and they retain their pigment. So just based on the fact that they're natural mineral pigments and that the minerals themselves do not bleach in the desert where they come from. I expect that they would be fairly light fast, but I don't have any charts to prove that to you yet. These paints also, since they come from the wild, do not have specific pigment codes. However, I have listed approximate pigment codes on the item descriptions on Etsy. I think my favorite bit about this paint is that the coal black has a very warm cast to it. It's a warm black with sort of a sepia feeling to it and I just think it's so beautiful. All of these paints are made from pigments that I collect myself and grind myself. I select the stones based on a few criteria, mainly are they consistent in color, are they somewhat flaky and eroded because this makes grinding them easier, 
and are they fairly clean, by which I mean are they attached to other stones that I would then have to wash off or chisel off, uh, those ones can stay in the desert where they belong. Being that these are handmade, hand ground paints, there's going to be some inconsistencies. These are natural. They're based on the size of the pigment particles, which can change based on how the rock itself was formed, how far along it is in the weathering process, and things like that. These are not paints that I would recommend for beginners because these paints are sort of unique in that they're fairly gritty at times, especially the iron oxide. These are artisan paints. They're paints for collectors, for people who want to experience a different sensation of painting. They're not for people who are looking for a consistent color payoff. These paints are also vegan, which means that they don't include any honey. All of the pigments as well are plant-based, so there's coal and there's ironstone, and sometimes the ironstone has inclusions of fossil plant matter. This isn't going to affect the paint at all, it's just the way that these rocks form in my particular area of the Cretaceous sediment layers. Coal is not made from dinosaurs, so there's no animal remains in the coal. It's all plant matter. I only use gum arabic and pigment, so these are two ingredient paints. And as such, they're sometimes difficult to re-wet, and you may want to spray it ahead of time before you paint if you like an easy re-wetting experience. But I wanted to keep them to the fewest ingredients possible, and keep them vegan for people looking for vegan paints. I think these first three colors go together really well. Uh, they're beautiful, they're very classic colors. If you want to think of them in terms of modern pigment names or familiar pigment names, they're basically a potter's pink um, and a carbon black and a transparent iron oxide-ish. Now, obviously I'm new to paint making. I've only been making my own paint for about a month and a half. You may find that these paints are not up to the same quality as other handmade paints that you've purchased, and that's just because I'm new at this. We're experimenting, and by supporting these paints and buying them yourself, you're experimenting with me. So to anyone going to my Etsy store, which is always linked in the description below, Thank you so much for considering supporting me and my dirt paint making adventures. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how the paints function, how they layer, and how they look on nice cotton paper. I hope you enjoyed this demo, and thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for maybe buying my paint too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!